evening. Um, I spend a lot of my job talking to people. Uh, and this is one of the harder things I've had to do talking wise because uh, tonight, if you don't know, is missions review. Um, I'm talking about Honduras and then Ken is going to come in a moment and talk to us about the trip to Virginia. Uh, it's hard not because there's not a lot to say. I could probably sit up here for a few hours and tell you all about the awesome experiences that we had while we were in Honduras, but I've been in the same uh, position you are where you're sitting there and you're listening to someone talk about mission work and there's like there's a little bit of cognitive dissonance there right uh, there's this feeling of, of it's just somebody standing up talking to you about some good stuff that happened uh, and and I I hope that we can get past that a little bit tonight when when we talk and, and we're going to talk a little bit about what we did I've got some letters from some of the other people who went uh, I don't want you to just hear about good things being done. I want you to understand that these are moments where God in the human world intersected, where like through very mundane things, through hammers hitting nails and through food bags being handed off and in these very like these things that we so often take for granted these were moments where the divine and the mundane connected and and the divine overcame and and I know that a lot of you weren't there but I hope you feel the weight of, of what it was and what it continues to be. And that's a little bit about what we're, we're talking about. Um, back at the end of May, in case uh, you don't know what I'm talking about and you're just totally lost right now. Uh, back at the end of May, me and a few other people, there were five of us from Portland, six if you count Tyler Quinn, uh, even though he has forsaken us. Uh, I do count him. Uh, six of us got to go to Honduras and spend over a week there uh, helping a group called Torch and some of the work that they're doing in that area. And I think that's a great place to start is with Torch, because I think in order to fully understand what we were doing there, you have to understand what Torch is. Uh, when Tyler Quinn and I sat down and started talking about doing a foreign mission trip, uh, we wanted a group that had a sort of boots on the ground approach. It's very easy to do foreign mission work wrong, not because everyone I think hopefully goes in with good intentions, but when you're talking about crossing cultures and, and cultural barriers and language barriers, um, it, it's very easy to not really know what you're doing or how to do it in an effective or, or truly meaningful way. So we wanted to make sure that it wasn't all on us, that we were working with somebody uh, who knew what was needed wherever we were going and had connections to what we were doing. And so we wound up with a group called Torch. Uh, Torch is a Church of Christ-based missions group. It's not run by a singular church or a singular, uh, a singular body of believers. It's got people from all over the United States, all over the world, who work together to do mission work, again, all over the world. The specific group that we were working with is a, a couple in Honduras. Uh, their names are Dalton and, and Jen, and if you ask any of us about Dalton and Jen, we love Dalton and Jen. We think they're some of the best people ever. And they're some of the best people because they are just some of the most Christ-like people I've ever met. Uh, they grew up, well, Dalton grew up partially in America, par partially in Honduras, and, and Jen grew up in America doing mission work throughout her teenage years. And when they got married after a few different dead-end job type, si type situations that Dalton told us all about one night for about five hours, uh, he decided to move over to Honduras and they live there full time. Uh, they come back to the States for a few weeks every year and, and spend holidays with the families and things like that, but they live in Honduras. They are, they are part of the community there. And so they aren't just you know spending a week out of the summer or something, they're running all kinds of organizations. One of the coolest things they do is a, is a thing called Reach One, Teach One. It's a school that you can enroll in and you can learn skills like carpentry and gardening and all kinds of things. You learn English uh, and, and as a foreign language. And while you're working there, they employ you with a job at the, the campus that people stay at when they come to work for Torch. And they are using that as a way to, one, give people jobs and give people a source of income, but then also to introduce them to the gospel and introduce them to Jesus Christ. And so when we got to go to church Sunday with them, it is a church that Dalton and Jen have been almost entirely responsible for growing themselves. And it's made up of a lot of the students that have gone through their Reach One, Teach One school. It's built up of a lot of people that we built houses for 
and things like that. And so it's this very it's very much a system, right? It's very much a, a entity that is always in place. It is a Christ-like presence that never leaves Honduras. And people like me and people like you get to come in and we get to be a part of that, but it doesn't depend on us. It is not, it functions not because like we're so great and we went there for a week. It, it functions because there are some people there who are just amazing, who are dedicated in ways that honestly most of us can't imagine to being Christ-like, to being God-like, to being presence of Jesus everywhere they go. I have a lot of love for Dalton and Jen. I have a lot of love for Torch and what they do and how we got to be there. Um, the first, we, we built houses while we were there. We built three houses. Uh, the first house, or excuse me, the second house we built, I got to lead a prayer at the end. There was a, a man there, and we were building him a home. We actually tore down his first home because it was a piece of, it was some pieces of tin. There's a microphone right there. It was some pieces of tin, like, stuck together, and, and he, man, he had them put together, too. But it had started to erode and, and wear away, so there were all these holes in his ceiling, and so he was just water constantly. So we tore down his house. We built him a new house. We all went in at the end of the day, and we circled up, and, and I led a prayer. We had a translator there who translated for me, which, by the way, I'm terrible at that. I, I wouldn't pause often enough, so he would have to translate paragraphs, basically. I made his job a lot harder. Anyways, as soon as I started to pray, uh, the man whose house we had just built started to pray for me. Like while I was praying, he was saying his own prayer, thanking God for us and thanking God for Torch. Um, I, kn I know this is just, these are, these are stories to you. But I want you to understand that, that we walked away that night and there was a man who had a house who didn't have a house before and he believed it was because God decided that he needed a house and God made it possible. It, it, I, would, I, don't know what to, I don't know what to call it. I don't know how else to explain it other than to say it's just the most amazing thing that I've ever been a part of. Kelly, uh, Kelly Douglas wrote a letter. And she says, thank you, church family, for supporting our recent Honduras mission trip financially and, most importantly, the, the love and prayers offered. While it seems generic to say that this was a trip of a lifetime, it was, but I also hope that it's not. I hope through our words, our passion, our prayers that you all get to see and experience why this trip was so impactful to us. And one I hope you get to personally experience in the future. To travel thousands of miles to a country that is considered among 20 countries most at risk of worsening humanitarian crisis in 2022 and still get to experience the love of Christ, the joy of the Savior, and the peace that only God can provide is simply hard to express. Our ability to provide the most basic needs to the Honduran people by building houses, digging trenches, painting, replacing roofs, packing and distributing food bags, playing with beautiful children at the orphanages were, just, were such a small part of the trip. We were gifted with the stories and conversions of these wonderful people to Christ. We were able to see, feel, and experience their love of Christ. And each day, we were tasked with, how did I see God today? And oh my goodness, how could you not see him? He was in every nail that was pounded into a house, and every smile, and the family that was going to get to live in the house, and every hug we received from our new brothers and sisters, with every encouragement and thank you we received. Everywhere you looked, God was alive. Torch Mission truly does take the words of Jesus and Matthew 25, 35 through 40 to heart. The efforts that the Hines family, that's Dalton and Jen and, and Dalton's parents that I was uh, talking about earlier, Gail Davidson and all the team members that support and work for Torch, love the Honduran people and only want to continue to support them by providing shelter, clothes, food, and medical attention. The work we were involved with in only scratches the surface of what the people need and what Torch can and wants to provide. They continue to grow their services to further meet the immediate needs of the people, but also to teach them skills to support the family for years to come. With our regular support, we can continue to provide these needs to our brothers and sisters and help grow our family in Christ. Uh, Tyler Estes wrote a letter, and he said, initially when Tyler Quinn was pitching the idea to have a mission trip to Honduras, I didn't know what to expect of the trip. I'd been on some domestic mission trips and figured this would be similar. 
I knew Tyler was passionate about it, and I'd heard about the people there were really in need, and, and I knew I wanted to do more for the cause of Christ than just talk about it. Whatever my expectations were, when the plane landed in Honduras, they were all blown away by everything experienced there. I could spend a lot of time talking about the impactful things we were able to be a part of during those eight days. I could talk about the feeling of gratitude we received from the free families who we built houses for. I could talk about the pure, infectious laughter of all the kids from the children's home we visited, who for at least one day got to play and catch and kick a soccer ball around and eat pizza for the first time in, in over two years. I could talk about the nights where we stayed up past 1 o'clock discussing theology and godliness or other nights where we stayed up past 1 o'clock laughing and forming bonds with people that we'd only met a few days ago. But what had stuck with me and continued to make me think to this day was the morning where we all went into a poor community to deliver food and water filters. I went with a small group going door to door to people's houses, which were basically lean-tos or, or one-room sheds, to pass out a couple weeks worth of food, doing my best to communicate that it was a blessing to them from God. Once we'd made a few trips and my group had passed out 20 or so bags, we started heading back to meet up with the rest of the group. And on the way back, I noticed a few Hondurans walking past us going towards the same direction. And I didn't think much of that until I saw the crowd gathering around a pickup truck, listening to someone speaking, standing in the back of the truck. Uh, they were over 100 people who had come out of their homes spread the word to their neighbors, and stood out in the heat to listen to one of the Spanish-speaking preachers in our group and to receive water filters so that they could have clean water to drink. I was amazed at the sight, and I immediately thought back to Jesus. Was this what it was like when he fed the multitudes? Did people interrupt their whole days just so they could go out to where Jesus was and, and maybe get something they desperately needed? Obviously, we aren't Jesus and we can't do miracles, but aren't we supposed to imitate him? I came on this trip because I knew I wanted to do more as a Christian, and here we were being able to help people in much the same way Jesus did. We're supposed to judge things by the fruit they bear, right? What better fruit can you have than, than something so similar to what Jesus spent so much of his ministry doing? Here was love, and, and here was kindness and, and faithfulness. But it really shouldn't have surprised me that these sorts of fruits and good works were being produced. When the son of the missionary directed most of, his, most of this felt so compelled by the needs in Honduras that he sold his house, gave up his life in America, and moved his family to Honduras to begin a ministry there. Wasn't it Jesus who said, sell everything you have and follow me, and take up your cross daily and follow me? And sure, not everyone's calling us to move to a foreign country to be a missionary, but if it isn't, what are we doing to support and enable those who do? The work in Honduras is led by several passionate people because the needs are great. And unfortunately, it's not just in Honduras where people are in need. So how can we sit by and sacrifice so little of our comfort to help our brothers and sisters around the world? I've been convicted. I plan to go back and continue the work we briefly helped with in Honduras. I want to continue doing more for the cause of Christ in whatever I do. And that's just, those are, those are Tyler's words and Kelly's words, but... You could ask Hannah or, or Tyler Quinn or Sam or, or me. We all have very similar thoughts about Honduras and about, about Torch and about the work that's being done there. Um, it is so vital. It is so important. It is happening right now. There, Dalton, I have no doubt, is doing something. He's building a house or he's digging a trench. He's out making something happen. And he's doing it not because he wants to, but so he can tell someone that God did that for him. That was one of the most interesting points to me was just the way they talked and the, and the way they, they handled interactions. They would do something for somebody. They would give them a bag of food. And if somebody tried to thank Dalton or thank Jen, they would, they would stop them and say, this is not me doing this. This is God doing it. And, and I want you, I hope you understand the good that is coming from this. The church is being built. Lives are being changed. There's food on table. There's food on floors for a lot of these people. There's floors that they have because they have homes now because of torch. And so my, my plea to you, what I, I hope you walk away from, is I'm begging you, personally. This is Sam Thrasher. This is, not, this, is, this is me begging you, as your brother in Christ, to please find in your heart a way to support these people, somehow, some way. And support looks different, right? It can be financial, but it can also be just right now purposing in your heart that you're going to go at some point, and you're going to do something with them. 
It can be reaching out to Dalton and Jen because they're on Facebook and they have a website that you can submit forms to and asking them what they need because they need a lot of things. One day, uh, Kelly's not here right now, but but one day me and Kelly just spent half the day sorting through boxes because they get donations of tools. There's all kinds of stuff that they need so that they can either give it to people or so they continue the work that they're doing. Um, and after this, I'll post the I'll post the link to their uh, website on our Facebook page. Um, but I, I'm I'm begging you. I mean this with every fiber of my being. Please support them. This is meaningful work. It's life changing work. It's the definition of a watershed moment. I was not like super excited to go. I was very nervous about going. Um, it was the first time that I was ever going to go to a foreign country. I was going to be the first time that I left Emma after she moved up here. I'm still in the middle of adopting her. So I was like, what if something happens to me while I'm gone? What if, if I have to miss something in court and I'm supposed to be there? I, I will never question whether I should go back again. I'm begging you to, to open your hearts to this, this work and, and look for a way to support it. Consider it, please, consider going with us. It is amazing. It is godly. In the most pure sense of that word, it is godly. Thank you. I know that I've taken a, a chunk of your time tonight, as I am so want to do when I stand up here. One of the most insightful comments that anyone made at least to me all week, came from Sam a couple days in. We had just, uh, one day we went out and we, we dug um, a trench for a widow. Um, her, she'd had a house built by torch, but because of rain and things, it was all getting into her house. So we, we dug a trench around her house so the water wouldn't, wouldn't rise up and flood in. It would run down the mountain. And then the next day we went out and we built our first house. And there was um, a man who lived there, but there was also a, a, a small child that we think had been left by her parents, um, and maybe this was her uncle and aunt or something, and she was moving in with them. Um, and we were sitting at dinner that night, and we actually weren't saying a lot, which if you know, like me, Sam, and Tyler, that's wild business right there. Um, and, and Sam eventually broke the silence, and he, he said, there are entire aspects of God's commands that I thought I understood, and now I'm realizing I've never even done. And, and I think we all had very similar experiences. And so the, the most important thing I can do is just ask you to be a part of that in some way. If you have questions, Feel free to pull any of us aside. I'm sure any of us would be more than willing. Again, it was it was me, Tyler Estes, Tyler Quinn, Hannah Estes, Sam Carroll, Kelly Douglas went. Um, pull somebody aside. Ask them about it. If you're concerned about safety, ask about that. If you're concerned about food, because I was, ask about that. The food's amazing, by the way. So good there. Um, whatever, whatever you are worried about, if there's something standing in between you and that, ask us about it. I promise you, it's not anything to be worried about. I know I'm, I'm, I probably seemed a little, seem a little worked up, but I am. So that's a, that's a good interpretation of what's happening here. It is life changing. Not for us. I mean, it, it changed me. It, it, and I'm not going to sit here and pretend it didn't. It is, it is life-changing for the people there. You get to go and you get to do the work of God. And people who didn't have homes have homes. People who had no access to food. We walked into a children's home and we walked into their, their pantry and there was nothing in there. We got there just in the nick of time to leave them food. We don't know what they were going to do if we hadn't come when we did. It is life-changing. It extends life. It gives life to people in Honduras who might not have had a chance otherwise. So I'm, I'm begging you to be part of that for God's glory. Go home. Research it. Learn about torts, the work they're doing. They're not just in Honduras. They're around the world helping thousands of people in desperate need. Pray, decide where God is pulling you, how he's pushing you to help in that mission because there is room for you in a million different ways there. Thank you again for hearing me out. I'm going to turn it back over, I think, to Braden or whoever I'm supposed to.
speak to people for a living. Uh, Say that again so y'all can hear me. I don't speak to people for a living, not groups anyway. Um, so uh, my name is Brent Osbrooks. Um, I w hope y'all can see this. Can y'all see the slide? Okay, so I'm going to be talking about the domestic missions to Lexington, Virginia this year. A little bit about this work. This is the sixth one that we've gone on. A, a lot of you, there's several here that didn't go on this one that have gone on others. Um, so I want to just name, go ahead and name the uh, people who went. I had 25 go this year, including myself. And they were Ken and Jackie and Hope Wilbur, uh, Chuck and Don Groves, Laura Cassidy and Olivia Moore, Jackson and Carrie Pruitt, Prentice and Jasmine Driver, Sam Thrasher and Emma Bailey, Lanny Clark, Bobby Grisham, Diane Law, Kevin Law, my family, and two people who are with us tonight that don't go here, uh, Josh and Jenna Beth Brown. They're from Northview Church of Christ. Y'all can wave. That's them back in the back corner in front of Jay. I don't know why they're sitting in front of Jay, but <laughs> they picked a bad spot to sit. <laughs> but uh, um, of those 25 people that went, nine taught a Bible class that week. Uh, just wanted to make a note of that. Um, so I've got some slides to help me do the talking since I'm not a professional here. Usually the amateur goes in front of the professional, Sam. So I don't know who made this lineup, but let's see if I can get this to work. All right, little buzz in my hand, baby. There we go. Come on, Don. There we go. That's us, or most of us, except the person taking the picture. Um, so on this mission trip, the primary goals are, I know you guys can read, but this is going to help me out. Uh, goals are to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and to serve others. Uh, we do this by holding a VBS and various construction projects uh, in the area. Uh, all of them took place at the church building this year. Not always, that's not always the case. Uh, sometimes they'll find us a family in need. Uh, we've done, I'll allude to some other trips we've taken. Um, we've done everything from poor sidewalks to to uh, for handicap members or people in the community. We Jackson's even torn down a burned up trailer one, and, and uh, we had a group, the A-Team. The A-Team, as I remember, tore the trailer down that time. But that's us getting gas at Bucky's in Crossville, by the way. If you haven't been to a Bucky's, you ought to head on up to Crossville. It's worth a visit. Uh, hundreds of gas pumps and but you're probably going to end up with less money than you've had, and I have no signal, and that's not good. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right, so this is the group of the last night of VBS. Um, Sunday morning, uh, for that week, we had 18 adults and no kids, no, no children at that, that service, um, except the ones um, that they had before. Uh, Sunday, we, uh, the Sunday before, we, Heather and I went up and did a rec little reconnaissance. Not always do we get to have one so close this one was only seven hours away. A lot of times we've been all the way to Arizona, Arizona before. Um, but this one was close, so we did a little reconnaissance trip. Just Heather and I got away, went up there. They had 14 in attendance that, that day. Um, we averaged 55 a night, um, including us, of course, at uh, VBS and including 20 kids. Uh, nine of those we brought. Um, so... Teaching the Bible, loving others, and hard work, our mission trips are specialized in a unique way. We have combined vacation Bible school with construction work. There's Kevin on demo day. That's his favorite day. Um, the t other picture is our skit, and then there's Laura teaching her class uh, in the VBS. A um, little bit, um, I want to go back to this, to this slide. Go ahead, I can use that clicker. Preachers think this is so hard to use this clicker. It's not really that hard. Um, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> the talking's the hard part. The clicker's the easy part. Uh, you see how everybody's smiling right there in that picture? Well, later on that day, we skipped lunch that day. <laughs> and if you ever want to see some people start frowning on you, I felt, a, I, I mean, I, it was kind of a Moses moment for me. You know what I mean? How he was like, you're wandering in the wilderness. Don't feed a group of people one meal. One meal. One meal. And uh, see how they turn on you, how fast they turn on you. Anyway, um, but um, here's another picture of us. Uh, no matter what, if, if you were interested in going, it doesn't matter about your skill set. We'll, we'll put you to work in some way or the other. Um, he can use, God can use you to accomplish his will. If you're good with children, crafts, teaching, ice cream making, or running errands to Walmart, Ace Hardware, Bobby, 
that's Bobby's gift. Uh, we need you just as much as members who can work in construction, electrical, and plumbing. Um, there's Caden and Diane making ice cream. We had ice cream. We kind of stole an old camp thing. Uh, when we used to do a bunch of camps, we'd have homemade ice cream every week, so we incorporated it this week. Uh, one of my jobs is finding something for somebody to do, and so that was one I came up with this week. Um, it says, uh, for small congregations, uh, help of short-term volunteers reinforces the truth that they are not working alone. Mission trips create space for all of us to rally around, people faithfully loving and serving like Jesus as they determine how to spread the gospel in their community. Um, this church, I mean, like the, most of the ones that we're going to uh, the, over the years, uh, is a small church. It's a struggling church. Um, in some ways, you might consider it a dying church. Um, everyone in that church was probably 50 plus. They had hardly any, the, the youngest person there was probably about 50. Um, and it's just nice sometimes to go to these places and just let them know, hey, they're not the only ones that believe the way you believe. They're not the only ones trying to work for Christ. They're not the only ones trying to, you know, spread the gospel. And I think it gives them a big, big lift and stuff when we come. Um, so much that this was the last day and I could, this is, if you look in the middle there, um, that's Jim and Darlene. He's a retired New Orleans police officer and somehow he ended up in the foothills of Virginia. Um, but uh, he's retired, but he owes a, you can see it there, New Orleans snowballs. Well, they have been begging us all week, all week, all week to come get a snowball. And I was like, we got too much work to do. We can't go eat snowballs. Uh, so, uh, but I talked them in, even though they were disgruntled about missing lunch, I talked a pretty good sized group to skipping breakfast on uh, Wednesday morning. I said, if we can knock this stuff out, we'll go make Jim and Darlene's day, which we did, uh, and have a snowball. Um, so we, we did. We skipped breakfast. Bobby ran another errand. He went to McDonald's and got us a sausage McMuffin. And uh, we knocked out the rest of the, some of the, the last construction project. I wanted to get it to where I got it to. And um, we went out and got a snowball, had kind of a nice little hour visit with them at their snowball stand. We all got Mardi Gras beads. I know y'all, some of you saw the picture with Kevin with his Mardi Gras beads uh, sleeping on the, on the bus. So um, that was a great, I mean, they're the nicest people. And they appreciate us so much. They, they, uh, someone tried to hand them some money, and she threw it on the ground. She wasn't going to have it. She wanted. They were so grateful for the things that we had done, and and the boost that we had given them. They, they just gave us the, the snowball, which was a good treat for that day because it was really hot. Um, uh, this is a rare glimpse in the kingdom of heaven looks like, and hopefully it inspires us to foster strong, loving community in all aspects of life. Um, there's just us building, relate, you know, get growing closer together in those pictures right there. Um, all right, so this is one of the projects that we did. Uh, we updated this floor for them. That's that's probably original flooring uh, in that in that kitchen area they did. And that picture on the other is the floor we laid, got it back, put back together. It's not a great after picture, but uh, you can see it was real dated. It said, uh, here's a before and after picture. Unlike other congregations, we visited Lexington I said before they're older congregation, so they had the funds. They had some funds for much needed building, which they paid for most of these, uh, but they just didn't have the manpower or to to do the, any of these projects on their own. So we they picked a few and we helped them out. Um, here's here's actually a picture of Bobby doing some work. Uh, <laughs> so we upstairs we put in an ADA. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick on Bobby, but it's just because I love him. Oh. Uh, Bobby and I became friends when we were going back to Mexico. That was the first time I ever met Bobby Grisham. I rode with him for 22 hours to Mexico on a mission trip. And uh, that's a, you get to know somebody like that. Uh, but anyway, um, we put in an ADA accessible bathroom, which they did not have there. And as they're an older congregation, they, they, that's something that they want, really wanted. Uh, that's Jackson down there laying some floor. And I don't know who that boy is down there. He's, he was finally doing some work too. <laughs> and there's kind of how we left it. Uh, I told them there was no way, no way in the world that I can, that we could move plumbing, rewire it, demo it, and get it back together and finish the sheetrock. I said, I'm going to get you some sheetrock hung 
in there, you're going to have to find a, a drywall finisher because we just don't. But we got it. It's usable. That other little room that it made, they call it the cry room. Uh, for, um, hopefully, they'll get some babies crying in there that they'll need to use that cry room, I hope. Um, all right, so there is. Uh, we had 11 gallons of ice cream that were made and served at VBS, along with snacks and drinks every night, uh, including the day the maker was chopping and supply runs. Uh, we appreciate the ice cream makers that were lent from the congregation. We had three or four, five uh, ice cream makers lent. I hope we've got all those back to you. I think we've got two lids in the back of our. If you're missing two lids uh, to your ice cream maker, if you're missing a lid to your ice cream maker, we got it. Um, all right, so this is kind of a funny story here. The, the sign here, this, this sign was almost on a 45 degree angle, probably, when we pulled up, and it has bothered everyone in the group. And uh, Bobby tried to fix it the first day, and he broke the head off the bolt that loosened it up. And so we weren't, just going, weren't going to mention it again. And, um, this, is, this happened on the last day. We actually got to throw this little end on the end. And uh, there you'll see Ken, Lanny, and Kevin using their uh, strengths there to throw their weight on there to try to pull it down as they hit <laughs> beat on it with a sledgehammer. I took these pictures and I couldn't help but crack up. And I don't know if you notice, but in a lot of these pictures, my son Caden is with Bobby and, and a lot of them. And there he is. Do you see how much he looks like Bobby right there in that picture? <laughs> I just noticed that. I'm like, oh my goodness, he has spent a week with Bobby and he is acting just like Bobby. Uh, but there's a before and after. I mean, it wasn't on a 45. I was exaggerating a little bit, but it was pretty crooked. And uh, we straightened, got to straighten that up at the tail end there. Um, okay, uh, not only do we do those construction projects, got those out of the way, those are kind of like the meaningless thing, the meaning, not meaningless, but they're on the back burner things. We do those because we got to do something during the day till we get to the meaningful part at the end, and that's the VBS. Um, uh, we went some. We went to Oklahoma one year, and the and the guy uh, Chris out there told me he's like, if you come out here and all you do is the VBS, it was worth the trip out here. Um, so there's us uh, doing the skits. Um, the sk I'll, I'll tell you everybody who was in the skits. Um, so Sam was the narrator, Jasmine was Cleopatra, Carrie, Hope, Emma, and Olivia were Egyptians, Jake was King Arthur, Caden was his knight, I was Ragnar Lothbrook, you might not know who that is, he was a Viking, and Evan was my little Viking henchman. Um, and then in the middle, right standing by Jake in that top picture, uh, is his noble steed, Bobby. <laughs> And we even got Lanny to help sing the hippo song one night. Uh, one and only performance, I hear. Um, but then also, we also had an adult class. There's a middle school and high school class. We had a big middle school, high school group. Sam had a huge group this year, which is not really the norm, uh, but it was a good thing. Um, he had, I don't know, how many did you have in there, Sam? Usually 10 or 12 or something like that? Yeah, which was a big high school group. We never had high school classes that big, middle school, high school classes that big at the VBSs that we've done when we go out. But um, there's Josh uh, teaching the Bible. He stepped up, taught a Bible class. He can also uh, put together a toilet in about 20 minutes. I mean, he's like fast. He's, he can he, he put together three toilets, that, four, four toilets that week uh, for us. Uh, did an excellent job. Jackson, Ken, uh, Kevin did a Bible class as well. Um, but uh, there's that and then there's a group of the kids that the, they made that sign for Vacation Bible School they were really excited about us coming that's a really cute little girl down there in the bottom middle uh, she doesn't look too sure about that picture though <laughs> um, and there's uh, some other guys in other pictures that we just you know where we're just being a family uh, there's Chuck on his knees and Jackson we also redid the flooring in the women's bathroom downstairs in the basement, which uh, is a pretty old, but I can't, there it goes. Um, which was not just laying the floor. Uh, that was taking up three toilets, taking up all the stalls. Um, and that, that floor right there, I mean, that, that tile wall right there has a, um, has a tile base, uh, which you had to fit very tight to make it look 
like you knew what you were doing. And uh, Jackson Pruitt headed that team up um, and did an excellent job making sure. I mean, it was it was better. It turned out better than I expected. Uh, and Jackson's a contractor now, and if you guys are needing any work, <laughs> he's available. Um, there's Kerry and Jake. Those those two will do. Even though one of them's mine, those two will do anything you ask them to do. And there's Bobby corrupting my middle child again. <laughs> um, and then there's just some other pictures of uh, um, throughout the week. There's Chuck ruining my daughter. Um, if she turns out to be just uh, uh, something I can't hardly handle, Chuck Groves is going to be part of the reason. Um, there he is again, spoiling her. Um, that was the last day right there. We were all kind of jammed in there in that bathroom trying to finish. We finished the projects downstairs. There's Prentice, excellent cut man. He's a, he was cutting the flooring all week. Uh, so he was down on his knees all, all week long um, and always had a smile on his face while he was doing it. Um, and that's how we ended up right there. Uh, I'm, if, uh, I got told that I might have worked some of them too hard. Uh, I didn't work Bobby too hard. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, um, that was our trip this year. I just, I hope, I mean, I've had a few different go with me. Um, we don't go the same place every year. Um, we went to Oklahoma three years, went to Arizona once, went to South Dakota once, and we went to Virginia. Uh, most, of, a few of those have been with Northview, which has been a great experience. Uh, missed, missed Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Budd and that group, most of that group. Um, this year they were they're always excellent to go in the friendships and relationships we built with that congregation um, um, all of them are special all, all you know just reiterate a lot of what some of what Sam said um, you know they're all special and they're all life-changing in some way I mean you, you go and you you like this trip here I mean it was just like first century church you know we were just we were just together we were together all the time and we had all things in common um, we were just and just working you know and uh, so it was a great experience for me it was a great I think everyone who went and has ever gone has always had a great experience doing it um, I want to thank the elders for uh, supporting this work um, uh, I, pr I appreciate everyone who's ever gone and any of the ones um, and I've, that I've been privileged to lead, I guess, quote unquote, lead. Uh, I'm not much of a leader, but uh, um, I appreciate y'all following, trusting me enough to follow, follow me over there. Don't know where they don't even know where we're going. Um, they just get in the van and I start driving, and they just, you know, um, and it takes a, a lot of faith from uh, the places we go because they don't really know us at all. They really don't know us. And they'll just turn us loose and uh, let us start hitting stuff with sledgehammers and taking up toilets and, and they just trust us to do a good job. And I uh, just want to appreciate everyone here for supporting it and stuff. Um, and that's all I got. I'm going to turn it over to Ken. Well, thank you. Uh, Sam and Brent for those presentations and I want to thank everyone who went on a trip and took time out of their schedules to do that on both trips and the money they spent and so forth and especially I want to thank on the Virginia trip Brent and Heather they did uh, all the organizations and went ahead and took a trip over there earlier and thank y'all so much for all the work that y'all did on getting that together for us and, and doing that and then uh, Josh and Janabelle, appreciate y'all going with us. Glad to have y'all here with us tonight, and y'all need to meet them. They're a very wonderful young young couple. And, you know, as you think about these mission trips, they were two different mission trips, two different places of the world, but yet it was all trying to accomplish the same thing. Uh, it was trying to accomplish uh, to uh, spread the word, to help our fellow brethren, uh, and do the things that they needed to do to try to help them. You know, in the congregation there in Virginia, uh, it's small, and uh, even though it's a good-sized town, uh, they're struggling. And just brethren coming and spending a few days with them, it's just a, it, it seemed like it energized them. It gave them a big help. You know, somebody does care. Somebody does want to help us. And they're in a college town. There's two colleges there. So hopefully 
And then we met two young men who were uh, hopefully going to be regular members there that would hopefully give them some boost and, uh, and so forth. But yet as we think about mission work, you know, there's verses that always come to our mind. You know, the, one of the first ones is Matthew 28, uh, 18 through 20. It says, All authority is in heaven and on earth has been given to me, and on these find, therefore make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of age. And then we have, you know, the great commandment, as uh, Tyler did earlier. Uh, it's talked about the great commandment in Matthew 22, 37 through 40. It says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these commandments depend all the law and the prophets. And this is what mission work is about. The mission work is spreading the gospel and it's to helping people, it's to helping our brethren. And hopefully we have done that through these projects. Uh, the VBS that we had, they had people, uh, young people in the building who had never been in there before. One of the men had a daughter that's the first time she'd been back in the building in uh, quite a few years. So we were able to go out and some of the young people during the day went out and helped try to give out flowers and try to get people to come. And they did have people to come. So hopefully this was a great big boost for them. Uh, and we talk about the sign and kind of make a joke of the sign and that really bothered me for some reason or another. But we say, why is, why is a sign important or why is a building important? That doesn't save our souls. That doesn't spread the word. But we have to have, when people now, they look, go somewhere, they want to look presentable. They want it to look like we care. I think that's what we kind of decided the sign was. Uh, it looks worse than it did because if you go up on a bank and it was like that and you go up on this bank and you really had to look at it. <laughs> so we've got it straightened out and hopefully that, well, somebody will say, hey, well, they care. Maybe that's a place we need to go. So all of it works together. We as a people are the most important part, but yet the way we present ourselves and the way we present our building sometimes have a great big influence. Most all of you know me that, uh, know that bicycling is one of my favorite pastimes and one of my favorite hobbies. I like watching it. Just got through the Tour de France, watching that, uh, and then reading books. And I just recently read a book about a man who drove all the way across the United States from uh, Oregon to Virginia, from ocean to ocean, and he was in his late 60s, and he rode the bike across the United States for basically two reasons. He had a grandson that had a rare form of cancer, and he wanted to bring attention to that and plus raise funds. But in reading this book, uh, it wasn't in chapters, it was in days, so every day he wrote about a chapter, but in front of each chapter he had different quotes. And there was one day they had this short quote that has really stuck with me. And I used this over there, I'm going to use it again. And it says, aspire to inspire before you expire. Now think about that just a minute. That's seven words, but aspire to inspire before you expire. This is the way that we should feel about spreading the gospel. This is the way we should feel about our mission work or work that we do. So as we go forward, let's think about that, that we should aspire to want to inspire people to become Christians or to be, live the Christian life. Today is full of a world that is uncertainty, and I know we hear a lot of things about the world today and how the, uh, the things are really bad and all that, but you know, every generation goes through that, and we talked about this a little bit tonight before the meeting with some people, that, you know, I grew up in the 60s, and a lot of you, same age I am, grew up in the 60s too. And as young people, that's what we heard. What is the world coming to? You know, there was a lot of things going on in the 60s uh, that were not good. And so we heard that all the time. But every generation, we go through that. And then the world is today full of a lot of uncertain things. But where do we go for comfort? John 14, 1 through 6, it says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. <laughs> If it were not so, I would have told you, and I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself. There where I am you also, and you know the way where, to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So here we have this reading, which is very comforting. It says, let not your hearts be troubled. We need to believe in God 
and have many mansions uh, prepared for us. It's a place for you and a place for me. I know Brother Drake talked about that in one of his nights, one of his lessons. But he has gone to prepare a place for us that he will come again for us. And Thomas, of course, asked him, you know, how do I know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the beginning, the middle, and he is the end. It's that comforting to know that we come to Jesus through baptism. Jesus died upon the cross. He shed our blood for us for remission of our sins. And through baptism, we come in contact with the blood and our sins are forgiven. So as we think about these mission trips, the good that we've done, we need to think how we continue every day, continue doing good for Christ and help spreading the word, whether it's all the way across the ocean or here uh, in the United States and right here in Portland. So as we think about that, let us um, be a Christian every day and try to spread the word. So if anyone has a need tonight, we ask you to come at this time.